What is up guys? Welcome back to Review Space. How's it going? And yes, for the first time ever, the Review Space is doing reviews on screen. Yes, it's time for a change of pace. And uh, I'm really, I, honestly, I'm too lazy to make these thumbnails and these, you know, little pictures. It's just faster this way. It's just easier. Um, Alright, let's begin with Brock Lesnar cutting a promo. Well, not really Brock, but it, actually it's Paul Heyman. And basically, Brock Lesnar was declared the master and conqueror of WWE by Paul Heyman with the vanquishing of Triple H. Ah, uh, you know, this whole angle of, you know, Triple H being supposedly like, oh, is his career over and all this, all this crap? Honestly, no. No, this is, it's just a complete angle. They're just trying to pull into the emotional heartstrings of all these fans, like, oh my god, Triple H, is, is his career done? Is it over? No, it's not. You know, he... <laughs> <laughs> this is just a storyline. Okay, so Sin Cara, Kofi and R-Truth uh, going up against primetime players, Cody Rhodes. They were actually defeated. Uh, that's pretty much it. Sin Cara, Kofi and R-Truth, they win this match. Pretty basic match. Uh, kind of predictable. Uh, primetime players losing again to Kofi and Truth. Not, you know, not a big uh, surprise there. As far as Cody Rhodes, you know, he's going to bounce back. He's not, you know, his, he's still going to be in that spotlight there's they're not really bearing him i think they just need to find a, a proper feud for him there's not a, a, anything going on with his character and seeing kara he is getting some wins recently i don't know if it's a sign that he's going to get pushed to the uh, upper card but this this could be just like a one-off kind of you know thing it's it, one of these matches that doesn't really matter at the end all right so we have ryback against two jobbers again and you know this time basically he was attacked by Jinder Mahal from behind so he wins by DQ he's still undefeated I guess Ryback right counters fends off Jinder Mahal and then he still dominated the two jobbers I guess they have a pseudo feud going on here it's Jinder Mahal I, I don't know they're kind of sort of treating him as a more serious heel but they need to really push Jinder Mahal a bit better. Have him win over people to make him actually seem convincing and, and somebody who can might actually, you know, destroy somebody. Ryback is already getting established as a top monster type of guy, a beast type of character. With his, you know, improved music and the whole feed me more thing, he's just gonna keep getting more over and he, he's just gonna keep climbing the ranks so we need to sort of up Jinder Mahal's character and make him seem a bit more serious and a bit more uh, there's more credibility in defeating Jinder Mahal and so you kind of have this two younger talent that sort of benefits each other instead of just okay we got Ryback as this top guy or a guy who's about to get pushed to be a top guy beating some guy some jobber Jinder Mahal Okay, so we, now we have Alberto Del Rio against Randy Orton. Randy Orton wins this one. Pretty easy, pretty basic. Unfortunately, you know what? Because they, they did a Sheamus thing where Sheamus was ringside and then Alberto <laughs> was pinning Randy, but Randy's foot was on the rope. And then Sheamus actually notified the referee, so it was kind of like this further salt in the wound from um, SummerSlam's loss against Sheamus. While I did appreciate that they took, you know, time to actually make the crowd notice, hey, they took time to make people see that, okay, this is what we did at SummerSlam. Now look at it from this twist. They gave it some attention. I still don't like the twist, that the fact that now Alberto has, has they're just kind of making fun of him. It's just kind of stupid. It's like they screwed him at SummerSlam, and now he's losing because of Sheamus not really screwing him over, but rather he lost to the same tactic that caused him the frickin' match at SummerSlam. I think it's just kind of dumb. Like, there's no point in continuously rubbing it in Alberto Del Rio's face. There's no point of consistently making him seem like, oh my god, look at this idiot, like, look at this dumbass. Like, let's keep make f keep making fun of this guy. Let's keep burying this guy. I think sooner or later, Alberto is just going to snap and something's going to happen where he just comes back as a, a really vicious type of heel. That's what they should do. 
and just get back at Sheamus in a really mean, very underhanded way. Just completely get at him in a very evil way. Because right now, Alberto is just being played here. He's just being played. Alright, so we have a match with Brodus Clay against Damian Sandow. And I thought this was one of the more exciting matches. We got Sandow sneaking in an actual win over Brodus Clay. So that's pretty cool. You know, Sandow was great. He was able to make Brodus Clay look like a million bucks. He was bumping all over the place. He was almost like a Dolph Ziggler. That was awesome. So I'm definitely going to be... I'm turning into a Sandow fan for sure. I'm really getting into this character. He is... And he seems like a really competent bumper worker. So it's cool, man. Okay, we have Kane and Zack Ryder um, against Daniel Bryan and The Miz in a tag match. I like that they still kind of have this continuity where Bryan and Miz still have some ten tension and there's this disconnect there from their NXT days. Uh, Daniel Bryan basically runs off, he slaps Kane and then he leaves. Uh, Kane goes after Zack Ryder and just completely destroys Zack Ryder. The crowd was really into Zack Ryder still to this day, but honestly, I mean, nothing's happened with Zack. I can't believe he's still in the company. You know, this guy is just... He's been buried so many times. We haven't seen him in so long. I mean, I don't know what to say. And I haven't seen his his show in a long time. Like, I used to watch his show, Long Island IZ Stories or whatever, on his YouTube channel. And then they moved it to the WWE channel, Fan Nation. And then they removed the comments and all that crap. So then that sort of destroyed, like, the interactivity and the, the awesomeness of that, you know, web series. So I haven't really paid attention to his, e even his YouTube uh, videos. Alright, so we have a Divas segment with Caitlyn basically eliminating Eve. It was kind of a battle royale or something for the number one Divas title. And so Caitlyn is the winner. She is the number one Divas contender for the Diva Championship. They're, they're pushing Caitlyn. I mean, she she's had some recent wins. Um... I don't know what to say with Kaylin. I haven't really seen enough of her to say that, well, she's good or bad. I don't think she's that great from what I've seen so far, but... I don't know. It just seems kind of like a rotating uh, wheel of kind of like random female wrestlers. Like, okay, for this month, we're going to push this girl and give her like 50 minutes of fame. And then next month, this, uh, this other chick gets in and so on and so forth. Sort of this rotation of you know, random female wrestlers, whoever, it's it's like a hot potato kind of thing, but, you know, the potato is not even hot at this point, it's just really kind of stale. Okay, so we now we have Dolph Ziggler against Chris Jericho, probably the most important match of the night. We have a contract versus contract, so Dolph Ziggler's Money in the Bank briefcase against Chris Jericho's, uh, I guess, career contract. At the end of the day, Dolph Ziggler wins... Actually, very legitimately, he was able to not even cheat or anything like that. And he was able to pin Jericho. Chris Jericho, I guess his career is over? He's not getting a contract anymore? I, I, I don't think this is going to be the end of his career. Maybe he just needs a... Maybe it's, it is just a break. I'm not even sure what's going on, but this probably could be a long-term kind of thing. Again, I mean, I'm, I don't read these stupid dirt sheets. I'm not really into that. I'm not into, like, the backstage crap. I don't care about it. But as far as his career being over on screen, yeah, sure. You know, let's let's do that. Um, again, he hasn't done much. He won his first pay-per-view match I, uh, last, uh, well, not last night, but SummerSlam. That's it for Chris Jericho for now. I mean, and this was predictable. I mean, I, I thought that Dolph Ziggler was definitely going to win this. There's no way... That Chris Jericho was going to win the Money in the Bank contract. That's stupid. He's an already established guy. And I think we all pretty much saw this coming, man. Alright, let's move on. Main event is um, Cena and CM Punk cutting a promo about respect. And how Cena's fan base differentiates from CM Punk's reputation about how, like, well, they really like Cena to this day. Even though he hasn't held the championship in a long time. And so Cena leaves, and then CM Punk just confronts Jerry Lawler. He basically asks him, hey, call me the greatest in the world, or something like the best in the world. Call me the best in the world. Jerry Lawler refuses, of course, but then CM Punk kicks him. And then that's it. Jerry Lawler goes down, and CM Punk just looks kind of like, yeah, I showed you. 
Okay, overall, I thought that this particular episode wasn't that important and it didn't feel very big, except for the Chris Jericho stuff where it seems like his career is over. Wow, you know, it's like, wow, I guess that's it for Jericho. Um, everything else just felt kind of like a slow progression of each character. I did like to focus on the younger stars here. You got uh, Dolph Ziggler going over, you got um, Ryback doing his thing, and then uh, Damian Sando. You know, that's cool. But everything else, you know, there's a promo, and then there's another promo, and there's all this promo stuff. And it just didn't feel like a very important, big episode. It felt almost like, you know, they're just starting to slowly progress some of these characters. Like, this is just a start of another month-long, you know, ultimately culminating in a pay-per-view. As far as uh, the CM Punk stuff, where it looks like he might have turned heel there... I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> One thing that I can't stand about CM Punk's reputation is that he has his set of fans. He's got a fan base, his his fanboys basically, that kind of dick ride his character. I can't stand it because people will li th those people will like him no matter what and cheer him and buy the merchandise, even though he's a, he might be a f baby face turning heel now. I I can't stand that tweener. Um, reputation, you know, I, I can't stand it. Whether it's John Cena, whether it's CM Punk, where half the crowd might really start to hate him, half the crowd might really like him. I, I can't stand that. And CM Punk, I think, will always have his fans, whether he's baby faced or heel. And then there's going to be the marks who are going to be like booing him because he's going to be sort of more of a heel character. I think at this point he might be closer to an anti hero. And maybe that's what he wants. Maybe that's what CM Punk wants out of his character. Maybe that's what he wants to portray his character is that he's a, an actual anti hero that's reminiscent of maybe the 90s. You know, the, the Stone Colds, the Rocks, those type of guys. Where he's not necessarily a good guy or, you know, this clean cut guy, but rather a guy who beats up people if he needs to. You know, a guy who just kicks people's asses despite. A baby face or heel, you know, despite what it like, it's just his personal selfish motives. Um, and he just wants to be the best in the world. So, like, this he's got this anti hero thing going on at the moment. It's kind of a tweener, uh, kind of thing. You know, I like anti heroes, I'm a big fan of anti heroes, but that tweener position, I, I think, sucks. It divides up the cheers, it divides up the booze. I don't like that. I like it when you're a clear-cut something. Like Stone Cold was always kind of a babyface. People still cheered him regardless. He's still an anti-hero, but people cheer him. You know, he's doing th these crazy things. The Rock, an anti-hero, but people cheered him. He was a babyface still. I think that's the main difference between now and then is that now, even if you try to be an anti-hero, now you get pigeonholed into sort of like this tweener thing I don't know it's it's kind of stupid anyway that's it for my review of this episode of review space and uh, thank y'all for watching until next time ciao